Hello, this is, this is not legal advice. Uh, we're just going to talk about a few things to do with having, uh, to do with the law. This, I'm uh, Daisy. And I'm Margie. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not giving any legal advice today. And so if you're confused, you should go and see a lawyer. They will give you legal advice um, it may cost you money. They might do it for free. What we're doing is giving, not giving any legal advice. We're just giving you our experiences of um, as activists and community members of interacting with the legal system. Correct. Uh, today, our topic is, um, well, this week, days, you wouldn't believe it, but I took um, some bail conditions to the Supreme Court. Wow. Great. Yep. It's fun being in the Supreme Court because they um they take the law a lot more seriously up there. Yeah, so can you tell us a little bit about that then? What led up to you taking that bail variation to the Supreme Court? Well, I had been arrested at um Sea Forces for being in a space next to a yacht schmooze. And mm -hmm. then they'd put they'd slapped a whole lot of conditions on us um to assist us with leaving the jail, the watch house. And um, they'd been varied once by um, my lawyer who'd brought them down uh, supposedly to just a little set of non-associations between me and three other people. Everybody else had theirs dropped. Yeah. Uh, and I still didn't think that satisfactory because I feel like um, as non-harming community citizens trying to get conversations about things that matter. Yes. Um, we really shouldn't be stopped for associating with people. And it turns out there was other um, bail conditions that they hadn't really dropped as well. For example, that I wasn't allowed to teach or um, uh, encourage people to do nonviolence or encourage people to take action um, and that I shouldn't associate with a whole a named set of collaborators and that I um, should never do any actions that were arrestable while I was on bail. Um, I thought those were all dropped, but turned out later on that they hadn't been dropped. Anyway, I actually took it back to a magistrate the following week and I marched into the magistrate's court in Downing Street and said, um, actually, I want to get these varied because I want to go to an action up in Newcastle next week and, you know, I won't be able to. I'll run the risk of being thrown into prison. So I'd gone, I'd already been back to a magistrate and, and the magistrate had said, you know, weren't you here last week? I'm not changing these. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the status quo stands. You've still got these bail conditions. Um, and I was lucky because I was just with our friends those yeah. two young people who had been in these sorts of circumstances before, and they marched me straight down to the Supreme Court to get a Supreme Court um, uh, application, which none of us had done before. It was right. a new thing. Mm -hmm. um, and we went, it was in Sydney, so we went down. This is a sort of a New South Wales story, really, because it yeah. may be somewhat different in Brisbane. It might be different in, in Victoria, but this is yeah. how it worked in New South Wales, and I think it's quite similar. So we went down and they said, if you get this in by, it was Monday, if you get it in by Wednesday, they said, you'll be heard on Monday. Great. That's good progress in the court. I know. I know. I thought, wow, that is fantastic. Yeah. I worked hard to get it in by Thursday um, and it was an sort of a little form. Um, I had to have an affidavit saying I wanted it to be a whole hour. So I wrote a thing saying I'm a lay person, needs to be be longer. Um, because I was to explain a little bit about what an affidavit is for the for the lay person. And yeah, the... it's a sort of signed and witnessed statement of fact. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm a lay person. I definitely need an analog. Um, yeah. Um, and it said on the thing, if you want it more than half an hour, you need to put an affidavit in. Sounds good. Um, and they said you should put all the submissions in at that time as well. That's like submissions are like all the things you want to write about and you want covered or you want the judge to read in relationship yeah. to this bail, bail thing. Mm. And I've heard that they call all that a bundle. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. my bundle. So this is what, this is my bundle. Yeah. And they always have like these um, bundles right. always have these um, 
tabs. Yeah. Look at the tabs. That's very impressive. Uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I know, right? And uh, <laughs> like a, a contents. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. God. You so like it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, the other important thing is some um, highlighting. Yes. Yes. And so I'd seen other lawyers, I'd seen lawyers do that. I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice, but this is what I understood it would be like. You had to have tabs, contents, and mm. highlighting. So, yeah, that might help, say, if you're on, you know, in court or on an AVL, and then it just highlights the bits that you really want to to get forward in that space. So yeah. Just, and, yeah. And so the first eight pages were my sort of reasoning. Um, and then there's a bit of case law there from Victoria. Yeah, lovely. Uh, lovely case case. Law. Yeah. There's um number two is some um some letters from people saying how wonderful I am. Awesome. Number four is uh the ba you know, some bail law basically that you can, mm. just in yeah. case yeah, just in case the Supreme Court judge didn't you have his hand on the bail law, which I think he did actually. Yeah. Well, just remind it. Maybe it's just reminding them oh, that what yeah. we, you know, what we know. What they I noticed know. he was had been doing bail submissions all morning. So my guess is that he knows quite a lot. <laughs> well, you know, the police prosecutors might not have known because sometimes no, like, that is true. Very much at all, do they? <laughs> That's true. That's true. They just got brought in. Um, I had the general comment number thirty-seven, which you might have heard us talk about in another one of our um oh, yeah. about in our podcast. Very important yeah. document. Um, I had uh the EH versus QPS, which is a um a sentencing case to show that activists hardly ever get locked up for their work. Yes. So, um, so am I right in thinking you were facing six months possibly as well for this, or was that a different thing? No, nah, I think you know I mean, this because this is a bail hearing, right? So oh, yeah, Sorry, the problem is always that you're going to um just get picked up and you're on on because you're you've ostensibly broken the bail and you didn't yeah. mean to like if one of the three people like my friend Zelda had liked one of my posts on Facebook mm. I, could, I could have been picked up yeah so I remember, that yeah happened to I a friend they of them. talked about um penalty points for each thing so it's how they view each part or all parts of the of the charges before them sort of thing um and that last one was an article also about people having um, activists, even though they might be sentenced to a year in jail, like our friend Violet, but then mm -hmm. having that overthrown. Yeah. Because it's ridiculous. And after all the months and months that maybe turn into years even, uh, being found to be not guilty and no conviction, no penalty. No, which, uh, yep, that's right. Which they went through, but, you know, to the to the detriment of their, you know, the, of the impingement on their liberty, amongst other things, while they were waiting for that decision to be made. And they, they, I think the material effect on, of having bail conditions is, right, that they use them to pick us up at particular moments in time. That's what the danger is. The abuse um, of their power. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, what our friend Kirsten says is the improper use of bail. Yes. Proper use of bail. Um, yeah. So basically we've seen this happen to our friends is that even when there's nothing planned, they think the police think there's something planned um, and they go out and they pick people who are on bail up. They find yeah. reasons why they think they've um, uh, yeah. broken so the bail crazy. conditions and they pick them up and they put them into jail and then they lose their liberty. So this is the this is the main thing that's concerning about it yeah um, it's it only thing. why we need to talk about these things on other things like this is not legal advice podcast this is not legal advice yeah this is it's experience not. just our experiences so i decided to take it to the supreme court which was pretty exciting yeah so you put in your affidavit and all your submissions and I, then went on, I went on the following monday yes. and discovered it was a scheduling court. <laughs> and what does that what 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 does that mean, Maggie? It meant, it meant we sat around for three hours, and the registrar, this uh, magistrate who works as a registrar at the Supreme Court, he was just giving people times for the future. Basically, getting you know, everyone's diaries aligned between the prosecution, the defence, yeah. and everyone else in between. I so know. That's the first. That was the first lesson. 
is that it doesn't come up for two months. That was it. And you're thinking, oh, here we are. And then it's like, oh, let's all go home and wait again. Yeah. So right. two months later. Yeah. So he said you can stay in Brisbane and you can do it by AVL. We'll send you an AVL link. Um, so two months later it comes up again. And again, I end up in a scheduling court, same court, and think I'm get all ready for it. It's another scheduling. So what I learned oh. was two scheduling courts first. Yeah. So don't get excited. Don't go early. Go late. <laughs> Turn up late. And it's a scheduling court. The first two times, check it. Check it. It says bail call over court is what it says. Bail call over bail court. Bail call over. And that means scheduling. That's so that's right. the thing. You prepare yourself not only like physically with all your papers and that, but mentally, emotionally. Yeah, and totally. Yeah, can, that can be quite exhausting. So, yeah, it's good to know, have a bit more, um, yeah, a bit more information and, and a bit more understanding of the paperwork that we're given. Yeah. And it also taught me why maybe the lawyers are not encouraging us, or not they're not taking us to the Supreme Court bail, for Supreme Court bail, um, mm. because it is quite an impost on them. You yeah. Know, they, they would have to spend a lot of time in the scheduling court waiting and um, yeah. and they don't want to do that as part of their um, pro bono work. Yeah. There's not much benefit for them, they think. So well, yeah, I was, as we've chatted about before, Maggie, have your, your 30 years experience have led us to this hour where we need to be getting more and more of these things in the Supreme Court. Mm, mm. So because it's... Like, yeah. It's interesting. So I do, I'll give you a little bit of a heads up. Like I yeah. did get the bail conditions removed and we'll, we'll come back to that. So oh, great. Yeah. I did get them removed. So yeah. completely removed and we'll come back to why that was. But um, it's, it's interesting. It's not a precedent. So it's important to go to the Supreme Court for sort of other reasons. First of all, I get them removed, right? The other reason is because we learn how to speak about these civil liberties issues, um, the civil rights issues in the Supreme Court, and also because we get as if we go ourselves and don't send yeah. a lawyer, we can talk about what's happening to us um, and the the way that the bail conditions are being used improperly. Um, yeah. And while that judge may not do anything about it, they might know somebody and they might mention it to them or the next judge. We're not quite sure how that works culturally inside their system. So, oh, it's something it's that's not it. culturally known in a courtroom is it it may not be yeah to tell this and tell their story but that we've noticed over time in these civil cases civil disobedience cases that this is what works bringing your heart into the courtroom that's right and telling and if we are saying over and over we are being subject to corrupt police officers who are yeah. using us to further their careers and improperly using bail uh, yeah. without any um, relationship to the um, the implied freedom of speech or the right to assemble, then we just keep saying that until, and you know we are different. You know we are uh, yeah. we are not dangerous. And, yeah. Uh, this is yeah. you know, even if we might be effective and our actions might be disruptive. Yeah. Uh, they're not dangerous, and yeah. um, you know, there's no danger to the public, and we're not in the criminal category where the civil civilly disobeying their system because we need to bring attention and you know we need that to be on everyone's mind yeah well actually the um one of the things i discovered is that the system the the government system is actually based on the idea that we are involved in politics who would have thought mm. <laughs> they actually That's is based on the idea that we should be involved and that we should be yes. getting other people involved and widening the scope of people involved in politics. Yeah. Um, and this, um, this the case uh, Brown versus Tasmania of yeah. 2017, it indicates this, that this very important, uh, they, they, they reassert this principle that the implied freedom of communication is very important. It's not unlimited. It is It does have restraints, but it is, the system of government is based on supposedly the idea that more and more people will get involved and understand what's going on um, yes. and it's imply and to communicate with that is important in location even and yeah. what what the way they um organize the laws shouldn't be deterring people from 
political action and political exactly. speech. I mean, when I st first started getting into doing um, civil resistance, I never realised how much politics and law uh, are involved. And, you know, it's never something that I really thought about. But now I realise that it is key yeah, to totally. making any influence and changing this terrible system that we're dealing with at the moment. Yeah, so I did get get off, like yes. off bail conditions. So for people who don't know, bail conditions are um, conditions that they attach to your bail. So they say, yeah, you can be released from jail, but you have to not speak to these people and mm. report here and you have to um, not do any any actions and not allowed to organise. Um, uh, yes, these are the sorts of things they're, they're putting upon us. Um, yeah. As part of the strategic incapacitation. Absolutely, yes. So what do you think went well in your Supreme Court case then? What were the things that, uh, you know, that, that nailed it for you? Yeah, well, he he really wanted to go to, um, he for his mind first, when the judge, his mind first went to Section 20, which is like how reasonable are these conditions? And I said, I don't want to talk about how reasonable they are. Um, except to this extent that I want to talk about the fact that there are no bail concerns. And yeah. the first the first principle is that there has to be bail concerns. And then you can figure out if there are bail concerns, they're trying to address those concerns through these conditions, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I that's where I wanted to start. And I also wanted to talk about this sort of civil liberty stuff. And I did get a chance to say that because I, because it speaks to how they manipulate it, right? because they manipulate it by saying we're violent, by making assertions that we're violent, and they manipulate it by saying we went and disrupted someone or stood in front of someone. So that's why I used the um, General Comment 37, because it outlines all the uh, explicit um, definitions of what is violence, what is an assembly, what is it not? And mm. it says very specific in there, it's not, yelling at someone it's not pushing and shoving it's not um um what's another one um it's and and that 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 peaceful assemblies are necessarily disruptive so it yeah. can't be just being in somebody's way like it's not blocking a pedestrian it says that specifically yeah. and yeah. i said and i explained to him look i'm not saying that this is international law but this is a definition that goes to the international law and that our local laws are supposed to be in al alignment with. That's yeah. how I understand it. You know, I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice, but that was the story I told. And yeah. he seemed to accept that um, as a, you know, I put it in my submission and so I was able to come back to it. And I actually chose 10 different lines out of sex general 37. You can choose your best ones. And, um, I drew his attention. I said, I, I use this phrase that you hear on the on the TV, um, you know, which is where I get my legal um training. <laughs> <That's beauty. laughs> they go, they go, I'd like to draw your attention, Your Honor, to Oh yes. Yeah. I'd like to draw your attention to I, yeah. paragraph fifteen, where yeah. it says that violence has to be this particular thing and is not this particular thing. Yeah. And, and what we, we are see, yeah, what we see is the police sort of um, pretending that I'm violent in order to get a bail condition, right? But I am not. I am of good standing. I've never done that. I've spent yeah. my life working against violence at every level, in interpersonal, cultural, uh, you know, structural, um, you know, and he pretty much agreed that, you know, that there was nothing in the facts that indicated that I had been reached some threshold of endangerment to other people. Good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But I had to argue. And so I argued by using the general comment 37 definitions. I also raised issues like that there's no, um, you know, that the bail concern was that presumably there are four possible bail concerns. And the one that they were looking at was, was I, was I going to commit yeah. a serious offence? Right. And yeah. Um, because he, he decided, yeah, I'm not going to be endangering anyone and I'm not going to wreck the court case by not turning up. So no. the, the only other one is to, um, what is it, to uh, 
um, commit a serious offence. Yeah. Which is yeah. undefined in New South Wales law. Exactly. That's it. So I remember you saying, like, you know, something like, oh, define what a serious offence is. Yeah. It's not defined. And I said, but as far as I, I put this in my, um, in my, in my, in my submission, um, that if you, if you look up what's a serious defence in New South Wales and you, you get a, you get a dozen law firms, all who say a serious offence is something that, you know, endangers person, people that is over five years in prison. Yes. That, um, includes like, lasting damage or harm or, yeah. Yeah, it's got a it's got a sort of a cultural definition actually, mm, mm. Um, and these police just try and throw us into this sort of cultural definitions. Right. First of all, they describe what we do in a way that over over flate, over inflates it, and yeah. then um, and then they sort of go, oh, they're very very dangerous, um, um, yeah. and that's that's what they're good at making these <laughs> these, these yeah. arguments. So, <laughs> but he wasn't having a bit of it. He's like. I, I said, in 30 years, you look at my record, it's got no, no violence offences. It's yeah. all public nuisance and trespass. Yeah. And um, and the, the, uh, the prosecutor tried to say, oh, no, but she's got a lot of things. And he's like, well, who cares? None of them are serious. Yeah, exactly. You can't just say there's a lot of things. It's like not what none of them were serious. They were all non-violent, direct action. Mm. Mm. So we're, we're sort of moving backwards in, in, you know, the reality of what I did, but yeah. also reminding them that the reality is in the context of, of political communication and that, um, yeah, I like that. And that political communication is actually something that the law is supposed to facilitate. Yes. It's and actually good. fundamental for their system of government, which we don't really agree with. But in that situation. Yeah. The Supreme Court has chosen to be seen to uphold the law and that and that's what we're talking about there, that they've had some discrepancies in the way that they've treated us, so we want them to, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And you remember that last time we talked about bail, it's still the same thing. You've got to talk a little bit about you and how good you are. Yes. A little bit about how you're not very violent, Um, a little bit about the implied right for freedom of, you know, assembly. Yeah. You know, so you're still talking. You're still going around these these three things. Bit about that you're not going to wreck. You're going to come back. You know, he admitted there was nobody saying I wasn't going to come back. That was not the issue. Yeah. So this is all under the that section of being not violent and a good risk to not having bail conditions. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. I wasn't going to harm anybody. Yeah. And you're going to. So we never got to talk about. The conditions not being reasonable or something or no, relevant. Didn't want to go there. No, because I just was not a concern. So if there's no concern, there's no point in having condition, and so there's no point in yeah. talking about how is it reasonable. So that's the first place to start, right? Yes. Is we are not a concern, and and it, it's different in, in Queensland. It's got a different. There's a different definition, right? But in New South Wales, you have to be a bail concern. You have to be a concern. And I think the concern flows from the preamble. Um, if they've got no definition for for, for serious offence, then yeah. serious, so then the definition must flow from the preamble. That's yeah. what I argue. I have no idea. He mentioned some case around that, which I'm going to have to look into. But, yeah. um, you know, if you're not, yes. if the preamble says three things, the right to liberty, the yeah. importance of the integrity of the court case, integrity, the yeah. endangerment of um, the victims, of which there were none, um, yeah. individuals and the community who are undefined. Yeah, that's it. So that's all the to do with the integrity of, like, why was this case even brought by the police prosecutors to that court? Yeah, well, the, no, the integrity is about, um, real what bail is about is about if you get, it's really designed to stop me getting out of prison and then going threatening the other parties. Yes. Right? So if I've if I've um whacked you and you're the witness mm -hmm. and I'm in I've been locked up, but I get bail, you know, the first thing I might go out is go out, find you, and whack you again and tell you not to talk to the police again. Yeah. 
That's what bail in the that's what it means to look after the integrity of the court case. Is I'm not supposed to go and do something that somehow puts the court case at yeah. risk. Yeah. So the integrity of the case is there was no there was no reason why your case had any risk of integrity. No, I'm going to come back to court and I'm not going yeah. to threaten any witnesses. Happen. Yeah. The witnesses are my friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to threaten anyone. Yeah. And then, and then I remember we talked a lot about liberty as well. A big part of that was. Yeah. Well, you know, elephant. I mentioned that at the beginning, but the the main effect on us is the way that the police can use the bail conditions to withdraw liberty at any point. And yes. we've had this, you, you, you mentioned a couple of, you know, a couple of situations that's happened in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, like I said before, you know, people were, you know, um, kept prisoner in their own homes, had the ridiculous curfews. People were picked up just going to a music gig together just because of another stupid condition about phones. And That's it just right. seemed like, yeah, they had they had this abusive power to victimise people in, you know, while we're waiting to for the process of justice to That's right. entry, which could be months turn into years, as we said. So, That's yeah, right. very important to know that this is an abuse of our liberty. That's right. And I think that having even one little bail condition there enables them to trace us in some way that we don't understand mm. and to go out and pick us up if they can. Yeah. And, and so this, I'm really encouraging people... Difficult. If you take bail conditions to get out, go and get them varied straight away in the magistrate's court, then go and get them varied. If you don't get them yeah. varied there, take them to the Supreme Court. So far, no one has failed at getting bail conditions dropped in the Supreme Court. Yeah, so it's always worth, in our not legal advice, advice, <laughs> always worth moving forward with something or other, such as, an appeal or a bail variation. That's right. Because, and, and they're, not, they're not appeals and they're not precedents, unfortunately. They, they're sort of singular yeah. cases. But if we all go with our, each of our singular cases with the same sort of discourse, um, mm. and don't just say, look, we need to go and live with our, our, our sick grandmother or, you know, we yeah. need to go and go to Melbourne to go bushwalking or something. Like what we need to do is to say, no, 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 we have, we want no bail conditions because we are not a concern and we are political yeah. actors and we should never have got bail conditions to start with. Yeah. And this could be like, say, if someone's got reporting conditions, you know, to reduce or get rid of them even or, yeah, things Definitely. like that as well as what you managed to do. Yeah, which was a great success. Yeah, because I think we are not concerns. Like, well, if you are a concern, um, you are going to hurt somebody, then maybe you don't go and do this thing. You know, this is for people who really are not a concern. <laughs> a concern being yeah. someone who is going to be violent or harmful to another person in the society. Exactly. We are not yeah. in our business being harmful to other people. And even yeah. um, and so safety and endangerment are the key elements for a serious offence not just some higher offence, some other higher offence that yeah. you might do. So I feel like the more and more we can take these uh, ridiculous bail variations and conditions to the Supreme Court, the better it is in general because magistrates will stop allowing it maybe somewhat. Yes, that's right. Well, that's what we're, we're wondering if there's some sort of trick, cultural trickle-down effect. So yes. the, um, the, you know, somebody might write up what, the discussion was in the Supreme Court yes. and start to put that and then maybe the civil liberties lawyers will then start to be able to assert that there's improper use of the bail conditions at the low level and that that yes. improper bail could you know that and then they might move to some sort of um I don't know maybe they they could have some sort of regulation that says if you're arresting a protester you cannot put bail conditions on because they will not yeah. stick in, you know, I don't know how they're going to do that, but we need, that's yeah. what we're going for. But basically they're trying to criminalise us, um, yeah. which is, you know, I, you've got to be careful using that word because they've criminalised so many people in the society. Yeah. Um, and that I'm not, uh, uh, but, but <laughs> you know, they're, they're now widening that uh, web to include us as well. And they will widen yeah. it to include other people as well. Yeah. 
Thank you, Maggie. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I think yeah. um, I think the only the only other interesting thing that would just well, you know, I've got the I've got the submission that I already made, and you can adapt yeah. that. Anybody can adapt that. Great. It includes this. Um, you shouldn't use bail as an injunction case from 1994 in Melbourne, which is a not well known outside of Victoria, but it's been a very successful case in Victoria. Yeah. Um, it includes, you know, a structure by which you yeah. can um, propose what you want to say. Um, yeah. Okay. And yeah, and what you know, the the strong thing is that when you're uh, doing it yourself, you could you could do it like you could help a lawyer by going to the you know putting it in yourself um doing doing the um early phases of administration and then they might come along with you on the day but that yeah. might be the way a pro bono could do it but what you get to do as yourself is you get to insert a lot of assertions about the corrupt policing yes i think that's very empowering that's the fun bit our non-violence is often met with violence so yeah it gives the you know the holding space kind of thing to us yeah yeah well you get to talk about the strategic incapacitation and the improper use of bail in a yeah. way that the lawyers won't and the reason the lawyers won't is because they say oh well a magistrate made that that decision that's a magistrate decision and a magistrate magistrate's decision is pure right they have to regard it as pure we can we can just make all sorts of assertions like the magistrate was sucked in and manipulated by corrupt police. That's yeah. why they made that decision. And what yeah. I'm saying is that, you know, that's improper use of the Bail Act. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, lovely. Thank well, you, Marky. This is the Yeah. <laughs> Daisy and I, it's not legal advice, right? Not legal advice. No. No. And you can um, join us again on our podcast. We're on wage peace on youtube um it's not legal advice and but we want you to know there's different things you can do yourself or um using lawyers in a in a in a way that respects their resource um yeah. sometimes that means self-repping or just using them for help um and yeah daisy and i are here to tell you what's been happening around us yeah so, you know, if you want to have a chat anytime, give us a call. See you soon. <laughs> See you. Bye.